Now, final score with Nick Walters on Fox 16. Welcome in everybody. We salute the fallen soldiers of old and hope you're enjoying the summer holiday time. But on the diamond for the Razorbacks, Memorial Day weekend wasn't one to remember. The baseball team couldn't notch a win in the SEC tournament and Arkansas softball saw their historic season come to a close in supers, coming just short of their first ever trip to the College World Series. The Lady Razorbacks took game one against Texas, but game two saw a massive turning point. Arkansas leading and with runners in scoring position, a single at bat lasted 21 pitches and the Longhorns won the battle. Little did we know that would let Texas win the war. Right after, the Horns rattled off three runs that would go unanswered and Arkansas never got out of that funk, getting shut out in a decisive game three. So the SEC champs are out of the race and it's a goodbye to the seniors who brought the program to new heights. Um, I mean, they took a chance on us um, and they've built this. And I think that um, when you're out there and you see the 3000 plus in the hog call, they did that. I know that I just felt really, really lucky that I got to coach them and really fortunate that they chose us. And uh, they've left us in a really good spot. This team wanted it really bad. Um, and I really wanted it for them. Um, and I just didn't get it done today. When you leave, your hits don't matter anymore and the wins don't matter for you personally. It's something that you leave behind. So I think just taking away all of the friendships and the family that you've made while you were here and hopefully what you did while you're here was good for the people that get to stay and build on it. And although we're really disappointed, I just have to take this time to say how proud I am of this group um, and the season that they've had. Um, and really, really proud of the seniors for what they've done for this program. And it'll never be the same. All right, the Hogs' seventh season under Courtney Dipel was a heck of a ride and one that had a whole lot of firsts. Arkansas won their first ever SEC regular season title, became SEC tournament champs for the first time, won their first ever super regional game, and earned the most wins the program has ever had in a single season. One avid fan who knows what made that program's ride possible is a former player. Sydney Parr Lee started North Little Rock and played for her home state Hogs from 2017 to 2020. She's now married to former Arkansas baseball pitcher Evan Lee, dabbling in sports casting, player representation, and coaching up young softball players. Hear why Sydney couldn't be more proud of her past teammates and coaches, plus why the best may be yet to come. Just the passion that I personally have for the softball team, the program, the coaching staff, um, and the state, it, it, I was emotional um, just because I know what goes into it and how close they were. Uh, it would have been the first time in program history to go to OKC. Um, and just, you know, once that final out was made, it, it crushed me personally for them. Um, and then to hear the post game, you know, presser with Coach Dyfel and Lenny and Hannah um, and just seeing them, you know, kind of closing out and walking off the field. Uh, it, it's just it's emotional. It, it really is. And the season that they had was absolutely outstanding. I mean, the SEC champs, they win the SEC tournament. Never have we been seated this high in program history. Um, and, you know, they have a lot to be proud of. I, I know getting to OKC, that's the end goal. Um, but but to reflect on the season, the team and the coaching staff, they, they have a lot to be proud of. Um, and, I, and I know it's tough um, and, and I hate it. <laughs> The senior class, they have been the foundation of this program. Um, that class, what they've done for the program and where they have gotten it to with their on-field play, but just the leadership and the type of women that they are, um, they're, they, they're the biggest reason as to why um, the program's where it's at. And, you know, Mary Half, um, Hannah McEwen, I mean, Daniel Gibson, and just, just the entire class, Lenny Malkin, all of them they have really built it to what it's what what it's come to and it's just their hard work their drive the determination that they have the culture along with the coaching staff of what they they created um and it just it it truly showed throughout this season um and i know they didn't leave on the note that they wanted to but the progression of the season the success that they had that that's them that's that senior class i was just just really really excited for the team <laughs> 
it starts with Coach Dyfel. I mean, just the woman that she is, the leader that she is, the way that she has shaped this program, the, you know, the vision that she had, it is more than fulfilled that. Um, and it's just, it's just who she is. She's like a magnet of a person. Like I was telling someone the other day, if she said, go run through, you know, the outfield wall, I'd go run through the wall for it. Um, and I know all of the girls feel that way. So when you have that type of coach leading you and coaching you and the type of woman that she is, um, it, it's going to be really hard for the program to not continue to have success. And then the rest of the coaching staff, coach Matt, Michael, Yolanda McCray, Amy Smith, you know, the previous um, volunteer assistant coaches, they've all have gotten the program to where it is because of the people who they are, but the coaches that they are. The program is just going to continue to elevate because of what they do and how they, you know, how they are as coaches. Um, the number one recruiting class is coming in this next year. And it's just, it's just going to continue to climb because of everyone's taken notice. Coach Diefels put Arkansas softball on the map, you know, a few years ago, it was kind of like, oh, okay, like Arkansas softball, you know, they're in the SEC. And now she's gotten it to where it's Arkansas softball. Like this is a dynasty and it's going to continue to be that program that girls want to go play for. Like that's, you know, the, Arkansas is that program where these high school kids, they're like Arkansas softball. Like that's within my top three schools of where I want to go play. I think proud is even an understatement. Um, you know, I don't miss a game. I am so immersed and just die hard about the program um, and the girls that I played with. And then, you know, again, the coaching staff and to see their progression of the season and the wins, the big time wins and to be the SEC champs and win the SEC tournament and, you know, have the highest seed in program history um, and, you know, win, you know, that super regional game. It, it, I just, I'm so proud. I just am so elated for what they've done and, you know, with had been a few of those girls' teammates or more than a few, a good portion of the team, um, it just makes me proud of the women that they are um, and, you know, the success that they've had as athletes, but knowing the success that they're going to have now post-playing and just to see those successes throughout the season, it's it's just so well-deserved. Um, and they've all built it, they've done it, and it, it's just it's just a testament to who they are as women and athletes. But the support that the university shows female athletics and you know the softball team, I, I don't think it's like it, like it you know at other schools. Um, and so even when I was playing, I remember after every game when we would call the Hogs and just panning around the stadium and seeing all of the young girls who I was once in their shoes with their dads and their moms and their teammates and seeing them just how excited they are to be there and you know having that dream of wanting to be a lady razorback and just the support as a whole uh it's just a it's a really beautiful thing um and, and it still gives me chills to this day um but the support's great and you know it, it feels like when you play and there's all of that support in that fan base it's like you, you're unstoppable because it's like the whole state of arkansas against the team that you're playing and i can tell you for the opponents coming in uh, it's really hard to play at Vogel Park when you've got that type of fan base and support and, you know, the success of the team. A big thanks to Sydney for talking to us and congrats to Arkansas softball for an outstanding season that will not soon be forgotten. But up next, we'll head to baseball. Meet an in-state Razorbacks commit who's won numerous state titles and earned finals MVP honors in two different sports. See right here. You're watching Final Score on Fox 16. Well, the SEC tournament didn't go the way DVH and Razorback fans had hoped. The Diamond Hogs going 0-2 in Hoover and being eliminated by Florida. Losing six of their last eight games, Arkansas will try to right the ship in regionals next weekend. But taking a look at the future, one homegrown commit will look to make an impact two seasons from now. Ahead of his senior year, Kate Smith already has two state titles and a state finals MVP to his name. And the same can be said about his accomplishments as a quarterback. A two-way standout for Harding Academy baseball, Smith will look to bring his winning ways in high school to the hill. It was just crazy to think that I wanted to do that my whole life and it finally was coming true. There's a certain breed of multi-sport athlete, a hybrid as a pitcher and as a quarterback, whose arm is a cannon in the pocket and a flamethrower on the mound. Cade Smith, a rising senior at Harding Academy, who's pledged to his home state Diamond Hogs, is making a case to be just that. 
Really, it started when I was in ninth grade. I went to their camp and I like started doing well. And then I went to that camp and they said they had interest in me and I was like, wow, that's my dream school. They, I never thought that would happen. I've loved baseball ever since I was a kid. I never really thought about football that much up until they told me I was gonna be quarterback. But I always knew in the back of my mind that baseball is my sport that I would be going to college for. Taking state last weekend, the Razorbacks commit has now won back-to-back -back 3A titles on the bump as he closed out Harding's win over Ashdown. He had earned finals MVP honors the year prior as a sophomore. It was Smith's second state title this school year. As behind center last fall, Smith led the Wildcats to their program's third straight state championship. He totaled five touchdowns in the second half against Prescott, bringing home hardware as MVP. Starring in both football and baseball has helped add versatility to Smith's game. Quarterback foot, footwork drills, I would say, really helped me getting my fielding and running. And just all the weightlifting and football just made me a lot stronger and helped my arm strength. And I feel like the more I play the other sports, it gives me more room to improve in baseball. Because once I get to college, I'll obviously have to focus on baseball, and that's all I can do. So I feel like my room to get better will really increase when I get to college because that'll be all I'm doing and I'll devote all my time to it. You'll see Smith suit up at Baum Walker in the future. The question is, at what position? A strong hitter, he's keeping his options open and working in the outfield so he can be in the batting lineup in college. Probably play in the field and hit because you get to play every single day. You don't get to just pitch one day and rest more days and then pitching again. You get to play every single day and contribute to the team. Smith is walking in the footsteps of the likes of Austin Ledbetter, a current Razorbacks pitcher who led Bryant football to consecutive state titles as their starting quarterback. Smith is leaving a legacy of his own in Searcy as he leads a 3A powerhouse in two major sports. What I'm working on right now mostly is mobility and speed because mobility, if you get really tight and you can't like move your arms and get the range of motion, you, you can't throw as hard. And if you get a good range of motion and you get that whip in your arm, you really throw a lot harder. While he still has unfinished business in his senior year at Harding, Smith looks forward to joining his home state hogs next year and hopes Dave Van Horn and staff can help him reach his potential. Coach Full told me at the beginning of this year that he talked to Coach Thompson and Coach Van Horn on the phone and he's, they told him that they could see me playing corner outfield or infield for them, but mostly corner outfield, so right or left, and because they want me to hit. They think I can hit in a lot of Nick Walters, Fox 16. We're excited to see how Smith's career progresses from Harding to the Hill. Now after the break, a semi-pro soccer team will join us in studio. Get to know the Arkansas Wolves who play year-round in Benton. Well, they say the Razorbacks are like Arkansas's pro team because, well, the state doesn't have one. But you have exceptions. The Travelers in Minor League Baseball, Little Rock Rangers in USL Soccer, and how about the Arkansas Wolves, a semi-pro soccer club playing their games in Benton all year round. And no, we're not talking about the A-State Red Wolves. If you're not familiar, we have some guests here to help you figure it all out. And they're both from South Africa. So guys, introduce yourself a little bit. All right, thank, first of all, thank you for having us. Uh, I'm Coach Tom. I am the Wolves UWS women's he uh, head coach and MPSL assistant coach for the men. Awesome. Good, good to have you here. Yeah. Um, I'm Lindo Gutler Zwane. I'm from South Africa. I play uh, left back for the team. Uh, it's my second year playing for the team. So. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Fantastic. We're happy to have both of you guys here to get the word out about your team. Now, first off, for viewers who don't know about the team, tell us a little bit, tell us a little bit about how the Wolves have gotten to their fourth season. Well, uh, it first started off with our owner and president, Sean Paul. Um, he kind of saw that there was a need for, you know, there's a lot of colleges in central Arkansas. So for an outlet for them postseason, between seasons for them to play. Um, and also the fact that there was only one team being the Little Rock Rangers as an outlet with as much talent in the state as there was. Um, so he decided that he would just take it upon himself to start it. So that was the foundation and through his you know, sheer force of will and his company Livestrong, uh, they've sponsored us to this point to help us grow and grow and through other sponsors like uh, our, our Travelers, um, corporation, a housing company, they've also helped us along. So sponsorships have helped us get to this point where we've grown uh, step by step. You know, we have uh, three men's teams now, uh, one women's team, but that plays uh, two seasons, so basically year round. Um, so he's, he's helped us tremendously and sponsorship 
as well has helped us tremendously. Wonderful. Well, Coach, you've been there for two years with the Wolves, and you've been playing for the Wolves for two years. So how have you seen the program evolve since you got to the team? Uh, judging from last year, last year was uh, we had a good season. We finished, uh, we made it to the conference semifinals. But judging from how we, we've started this year and how the team has expanded, we've done so well in terms of growth because we have a, a young coach as well who's very experienced in what he's doing. And we have a lot of players that come from outside the country, players that come from out of state, playing for different colleges, different backgrounds. But it just gives us an opportunity to do what we love and the team is just growing day by day. And sure. it's, it's very fun. Guys, there's a lot of soccer fans out there in Central Arkansas. And if they want to see you guys play, give us some details about how you can do so. Mm -hmm. Where is it played at? Yeah, so uh, all games uh, this season, so meaning from now moving forward, are going to be played in Benton. Um, so it's a stadium called C.W. Lewis Stadium. Uh, the city of Benton graciously allowed us to use um, that field, and it's been fantastic. You know, they have renovated it a little bit. It looks professional. It looks great. Uh, we have concessions on game day, uh, a lot of stands, home and away. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a, great, it's a great environment to come play in, especially in an acquaint, uh, growing town like Benton. Mm -hmm. So the, the community there is really, really starting to attach itself to us, nice. which we're really, really grateful for. But with that being said, you know, we want everybody in Central Arkansas to rally and help us build. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a community's team, not just, mm -hmm. you know, Sean Paul's team. He, he wants it to be more than what it is. And we want it to be the community's team as well. And we want every single player from the state to think that at least they have a chance and outlet to express themselves and maybe chase a career in the sport. Sure. Well, how has the season gone for the men's team and what's next for you guys? Uh, so far, we've only played uh, four games. We've won one and lost three, but uh, we started a, a bit slow. But then the vision of the team, uh, from the vision that the coach wants us, the way he wants us to play is there. And we're just gradually getting there slowly, but surely we have eight games to go. So I think from there, we're going to be fine. Um, the team is really doing well. We train. We train a lot, and we're just getting there slowly but surely. So, what does your competition look like? Is it over state lines? Is it in-state competition? And how does the postseason work? Just tell us about who you guys would play. All right, so <clears throat> it works kind of like a conference system. So let me ask, answer the first question. Um, we play in-state and out-of-state. Mm -hmm. uh, so our conference is, I believe, it's called the Heartland Conference. So we play some teams in St. Louis, Kansas, Oklahoma and a few over here in Arkansas. So there's a few local derbies, uh, I think with Benton County FC over in Northwest Arkansas, they're, they're pretty good uh, as well. So that's always a game that we mark on our calendars, you know, for state bragging rights in the league. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, a modicum of travel that we have to embrace, but it's part of, it's part of you know, semi-pro sports. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always something that you have to do. Um, uh, and your second question, if you can repeat it one more time for me. Just tell us about the experience, maybe, about uh, what this team is all about, you know, what playing, a, a, what playing in it is about, you know, what the experience and the culture is behind the Arkansas yeah, Wolves. I mean, more than anything, it's a platform <clears throat> for players who want to keep playing. Mm -hmm. You know, college is four months out of the year, and then maybe your spring season, and in the, summer, in the summertime, you don't have much outlets to express yourself through the medium of your passion. Mm -hmm. So... That's what the base foundation of it is that. The mm -hmm. second, secondarily, we want to promote the club to hopefully be a professional team one day. And hence why we want the community to gather around us, because if we get to that stage, it mm -hmm. becomes not just Benton's team, it becomes our team, sure. uh, the state's team. So that's why it's called Arkansas Wolves instead of you know <clears throat> Little Rock, whatever, or the Bryant or this, it's, it's <laughs> Arkansas. We want the state to embrace us because we, we have a, a sense of state pride. Every time we go across state lines, we're repping Arkansas. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we do that with pride, with passion, and with everything that we have. Uh, and that's similarly what the culture is about. You know, yes, you, you're using the platform for yourself as an individual, but you're also wearing the white and yellow and black of Arkansas Wolves, so that also has to be respected. And mm -hmm. as we go along, the players embrace that and it shows. Sure, if there's any soccer players out there who are curious, I mean, what is it like to play on this <coughs> kind of team? Um, it's very intense. It's very intense because it's very challenging as well, but it's, it's very good for your growth, especially if you have that ambition to become a professional player one day um, or to just come to um, like Arkansas and just develop yourself as a player. We have very good coaches like Coach Tabo himself. Like they help us very much in terms of growth, um, how to 
take off things mentally, not just focus on the on the soccer side, also like how to also be competitive outside the field. So it's very nice playing for the Wolves. Um, they, they really cater us very well, especially like coming from different states. They cater us very well. And if you, if you wanted to come to play for the Wolves, you have to really be willing to work very hard mm -hmm. and show what you are here for. Awesome. Well, yeah. we also have a South African connection here in Little Rock, and that's pretty cool. So you guys yeah. have been here for how long? Uh, I've been here since uh, 2011. Uh, I went to college in Central Baptist College in uh, Conway, um, and then I played. And back then, there wasn't <clears throat> many outlets for us to carry on playing. Mm -hmm. So I uh, transitioned into coaching. And uh, the head coach on the men's side, Sabelo Hill, was also at Central Baptist College. And we kind of been on the journey together to become the best coaches we can be. But with that being said, also op offer opportunities to players who want what we wanted. Mm. but didn't, we, they, they have the platform now sure. and we're trying to just express that platform so uh, most, most foreigners that come here as you all know always looking for opportunity um, so a lot of players reach out to us we reach out to some players and <clears throat> we always tell them hey, year by year it's going to get better uh, like for example last year we didn't have housing for our players this year we do um, <clears throat> and in the NPSL you know it's not really heard of for teams to have housing uh, for all the players coming out of state and we're doing that so every year it's going to keep getting better Awesome a lot of improvement and progress already. Well, finally, how about some social <coughs> media? Is there a website if people out there are curious to hear more about you guys and maybe see a game? Where should they go online? Oh, yes, uh, if they want to like watch games online, they can go to the Arkansas Wolves TV We have a TV, but if they want to go us on social media, it's, it's Arkansas Wolves. It's Arkansas Wolves uh, yeah, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook yeah, awesome. you'll find us everywhere. Well, a lot of people in Benton might be showing up out there, and anybody in Central Arkansas, we encourage you to catch a game if you can. But, guys, I appreciate you coming in so much, and best of luck the rest of the season. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you for having us, and uh, go Wolves. Go Wolves. All right, well, coming up after the show, we're going to have in-depth with Graham Bensinger. Coming up after the break, we're going to show you what's on that show. You're watching Final Score on Fox 16. Stay here on Fox 16 to catch more from Jimmy Johnson. But that'll do it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. Good night, and we'll see you next Sunday right here on The Final Score.